functionality once in a while, just when they need it. Uh, why take the time and spend the money to develop a native app uh, when, when the Yahoo data also shows that that's not the kind of interaction that people expect to have with a native app? Uh, on the other hand, if you're building a you know, customer loyalty tool that uh, a restaurant or hotel is going to use and they're trying to keep a communication channel open with that individual on an ongoing basis indefinitely, um, you know, then that's a pretty deep relationship that's contemplated and, uh, and a pretty valuable one and maybe worth the, the time and the effort. Uh, app stores have, at least I, the iOS app store uh, has an Right away, and they said, Okay, we'll hurry and review it. 
and I'm still waiting for, the, for them to review it. So, so you know, that approval process is at times painful. Um, it's it can be subjective, as in this case. In this case, they they applied some criteria that says um, it started with 10.6. I know it well in the user guidelines for approval. <clears throat> it says that your app has to have a, uh, a very good interface and a deep integration with the iPhone environment. Uh, and, <clears throat> and so they, they decided that this one didn't have enough of that. And they rejected it. So, yeah, question. But you did that on purpose, right? As, so, a, as a lesson for us? So, so this is, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, 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 that's it. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's ironic because we, we, you know, we use a platform that we've developed and we have a pretty consistent perspective. I'll show you. Here's, a, here's what high Ogden looks like. This is the shopping, dining. You see some similarities. In fact, I'll show you something that looks quite like the blog posting module. Right? This is where you can tell Ogden City, hey, I found some graffiti or something, submit a report, so on. So uh, we've had this interface approved I don't know how many times. In fact, the city of South Jordan's app was approved on Sunday, the day before the mobile slopes app was rejected. And they looked the same. But anyway. Um, so this can be, you know, it can be significant. Sometimes Apple just doesn't like things. Um, and, and when they don't, there's not a lot you can do about it. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, when when the uh, when the frameworks, the Accelerator, PhoneGap, uh, who else, Corona, when, when those kind of frameworks first came out about uh, two years, two and a half years ago, something like that, uh, it was actually very risky um, to, to, to to get something approved. Um, <clears throat> it's it's gotten a lot better because the frameworks have gotten better about uh, helping you access the native APIs. But if, if what you're imagining doing is, is just uh, bringing up uh, a mini browser and loading a web page inside your app, uh, you will probably uh, have very little chance of getting approved. They want you to, to make native API, API calls. So they want you to access the, the, the user's address book or contact list. They want you to access their calendar. They want you to access the camera, the, uh, uh, to use the onboard caching, to access the, the Twitter integration. You know, the more that that you do, the better, um, the better chance you have of being approved. Or, or I should say, that then the safer you'll be from this one evaluation. Yes, in fact. Yeah, I think uh, there are certainly some trade-offs with you know, an open store like Android versus a closed walled garden like Apple's App Store. And, you know, I've gotten a couple of rejections in my apps over the last several years, um, and they were for good reasons. But I think the main advantage of that type of ecosystem is it gives the consumer a great deal of confidence that they're not going to be downloading some spyware, malware, or crapware on their phone that could, you know, steal their data or do bad things with it. Or it, it also eliminates a lot of the copycat apps like you see on Android. Like, even if you're looking for a popular game like Ang Angry Birds on Android, you'll see a dozen copycat apps right next to it. And how do you even know if you're buying the right thing that you're looking for? Um, and I think Apple's approach to that store solves a lot of those problems. So there's definitely pros and cons on both sides of that issue. Yeah, um, it, it's a fair point. Uh, it, it, does solve some problems, no question, and um, there's a lot of good that comes from having that. Uh, I'll tell you another experience, though, um, that's a little bit different flavor. Um, uh, Apple, so I, I mentioned at the beginning that we did an app for 1320K fan, Sports Talk Radio. Uh, we did we really set out almost two years ago, and I think it was uh, at that point in time, 
time there were very few radio stations that had ours. We thought it was a great business to get into. So we started selling apps to radio stations. We sold a few, um, maybe about 10 of them. And, and then Apple decided that there were so many radio stations that they didn't want to have one app per radio station. And so they told us, um, you can't do that. Um, and we said, what's wrong with it? I mean, the radio station has a brand. They want their brand to be known. They don't want somebody to download the, the iPan Media radio app and pick a radio station. You know, that works for iHeartRadio, right? Everybody's heard of iHeartRadio. Well, that, that's because Clear Channel, who owns 2,000 radio stations, they make iHeartRadio. And the only radio stations that are listed in it are the ones they own. And so it makes sense there to have a, what Apple calls a, uh, an aggregator app. Uh, but if you're, you know, if you're a, a, somebody who owns five or 10 radio stations or you know, you're spread around the country or you own one, you want an app that has your brand on it, your name. You want to be able to have the kind of, develop the kinds of things we've been talking about, a relationship with your users, they can interact with you, and they know they're using the, the you know, your app is your brand. Uh, but that didn't matter uh, to Apple because, you know, they had their mind made up. So it can be a two-edged sword. Um, I, you know, uh, I still plan to develop a whole lot of iOS apps, but we go through a careful evaluation process every time somebody approaches us about making an app, and we don't always choose to make native apps. 